barely, barely, barely see. Right? But when you're at drawing distance, you can see it. So I will, with this pencil, kind of block in my basic shape. All these sort of preliminary lines is what I'd be doing with that. If you don't have that, just drawing very lightly with your pencil. All right? But here's the problem. Once you get this head drawn on there, your brain's going to tell you, that's right. I, however, have a tendency to draw my heads too big, and I know that. So now what I've discovered is the moment I get my head on there, I don't say to myself, ah, that's great, now I just go rolling along. I will stop and I'll say to myself, okay, Jack, did you make the head too big again? I'll bet you did. And I'll double check and I'll look. And again and again, I find I've made that head too big. All right? If you have a tendency to go the other direction, say to yourself, did I make it too small? But if you know what your own personal tendency is, you're way ahead. So I know I make my heads too big. So I'll say, is my head in the right place? Did I make it too big? <coughs> At this point in the drawing, before there's any detail down and everything is really light, it is super easy to change it. So all I have to do is just draw a different circle in a different place. And I've just moved or resized my head. It's that easy. But once you get detail on there and you're starting to draw the details, it's too late. You can't make those changes anymore. Once you put details and start to press hard, you're not going to want to erase, and your brain's going to lock into the marks that you put on that piece of paper. And it won't be until you get to the end of the picture, where you're trying to figure out, why does this look weird, that you go, oh, I made the head. So the, the first step of proportions, you put the body in. Step two, I put the head in. Step three, double check. And don't check to make sure you got it right. Check, because if I, if I, if I say to myself, did, does that look right? I'll go, why well, yes. Right? If I say to myself, did I make the head too big? I'll go and really look at it seriously. I've got a better chance of catching my mistakes. Make sense? From here, I'm going to add in a little line where the bird's eye and beak are, just to sort of place that part of the bird um, on the, the drawing. And I'll also put a little line where its tail is coming out. The tail may or may not be along the same axis in the body. So a little line for the, 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 the eyes and the tail. And now I'm ready to really have fun. Because I've got my posture, my proportions, this next step is the step where the drawing starts to really look like the bird. Right now it looks like Frosty the Snowman. Right? When I start to cut in the angles though, this is where things get interesting. So by cutting in the angles, it starts to take on the form of the bird. And I exaggerate the angularity of it in this because I'm fighting against the pull of those two circles that I put in. I'm almost ready to be able to start to add my details a little bit with a heavier line. There's a couple of other things that I do find really help though. I'll often put in a line showing me where its wing starts and where its wing goes to, and also where its feet's coming. You're wondering where those feet Okay. So the eye shrine goes from the center of the eye. Yep. On on little perching birds. Um, like if I'm looking at a, a warbler, that one line gets me both the location of the eye and the middle of the mouth. With a bird of prey, um, that line, usually the eye is higher than where the, the beak comes in. Um, but it gets you sort of starting to kind of orient. So, so the eye's kind of resting on top of the yeah. eye. And then the beak is a little bit lower on birds of prey. It'll be kind of hanging down from that. So the eye above it, the beak down below. So these lines here represent the front edge, the leading edge of my bird's wing. And I'll put in a little tick mark to show where its feet are coming out. So this whole part of the drawing happens very, very, very fast. And it's really light. So it's kind of got, I'm not drawing in this part of the drawing like this. It doesn't have that energy at all. 
It's not this careful <laughs> placing of things. It's fast, loose, it's sloppy, kind of going your body sort of like that. I'm going to draw a bunch of lines and sort of figure out which one I like of those. When my brain has all these choices, your brain will kind of start to kind of like, oh, yeah, it's actually there, that's what I want. All right? I put it like, oh, okay, yeah, there we go. That's what we want. Now, cutting those angles. You know, the, uh... So it is, it's, it's, it's fast, it's loose, and it is, um, and, and it is not careful and deliberate. If I have lines that are careful and deliberate like this, my brain will lock onto those and assume that they must be right because I drew it so clearly. So actually by having your lines be sketchier, more sketchy feel at this point, then, you're, then that's what is going to allow you not to be locked into any one of those lines. At the start of this, you want to be non-committal in your drawing. And some people are saying, but now I'm going to have all these sort of sketchy sort of circles and lines and all this other sort of junk in the way of my drawing. But what you do is if you make this part of your drawing really pale or with a very light touch, either just if you've got a graphite pencil and you don't have the non-photo blue pencil or if you're doing this with a non-photo blue pencil, when you start to draw heavier and more deliberately on top of that, people just ignore that those lines are there. And those lines can still be there, just light enough for you to see. But you, uh, and you've got guidelines so that you can place your different details. Okay. So let's take this approach, and I'm going to put up a picture of a bird on here, and it's going to be on there for one minute. I'm going to ask you on your page not to draw details, but to try to see if you can block in the basic shape, the posture, the proportions, the angles of this bird in one minute. One minute. So no time for details. Ignore all the details and just see if you can get a sense for the, the, the shape of what you see. Are you ready? On your mark. Get set, and go. Bird number one. of the game because you noticed. And most people, they only notice when they get to the end of the drawing. If you're not at the carving the angles point right now, drop in some angles. Look at this neat one right here. Look this, don't look at the bird, look at the space, the shape of the air right next to the bird here. You see the shape, that L made by the shape of that air? Put a straight line over on this side. Carve that one down there. Four, it flies away. Oh, denied. All right, this bird is gonna be around for one minute, all right? So let's try just uh, le relax your hand, right? lightly, loosely, okay. see if you can rock in a little sketch of this thing that no details yet, but you're just trying to get, can you get a head that's the right proportions relative to that body? That's your big challenge on this one, is just if, if you get the proportions of this one, you win. And if nothing else, you're training yourself to look hard at proportions. 
Another one's going to come up fairly soon. We're not worried about finishing any of these. We're just using these as little <coughs> studies, exercises, to get ourselves to focus on these ideas of posture, proportions, and angles. Right. So it's speed drawing of birds. This one will be around for That was a minute. Um, if you are still cranking along, please continue. If you want, and if you're sort of feeling like, how do you even get started on something like this, I'm going to do a little demo off on the side of the, the baby here. I first say to myself, this bird is sitting at an angle about like this. So I kind of give myself something lightly, loosely at about this angle. Um, it's got a body, and it's got a head that's sort of stuck into that body. It's a big head. Right? And it's got a beak that's kind of coming out in here, and it's got a tail that's sort of coming out in this direction. Right? So no magic so far. The magic happens when you carve in the angles. Right? Um, this thing is pretty flat across the top. And then somewhere in here, it cuts down. Right, so you notice it's super tempting for me to follow that line down there. It's almost <laughs> shocking to break away from that and go away from that, that little circle. That's because our brain is doing that snap to grid thing. Um, I'm going to come down here. There's a little bit of a step in and then down. And then... Over it, and it's got a little birdie tail stuff sticking out there. Somewhere down in here, there's a birdie foot. Um, so, a little diagram like this is sketchy, it's rough, but I've blocked in my basic proportions. And I'm closer to, I've got a framework that I can hang my details on. Let's try one more. <coughs> Oh yeah, and it's okay even to have them overlap each other. So the start part of a drawing is not slow and careful and deliberate. It's intentionally fast, intentionally loose, making marks that feel like you're not making a commitment. Because you're not. Anytime you discover that you have made a head too big and you catch it, celebrate. Because you're way ahead of the curve. Okay. <laughs> so the details on these again? Um, most of these uh, drawings that I'm showing you come from the website Seeing Birds. Uh, it's uh, the photo <laughs> photography of Ashok Kosla, who's uh, one of our Bay Area Nature Journal Club members, who um, has let me use a number of his photographs. This one's about to fly away. If you haven't carved in the angles. So this, um, what I suggest you do, if you want to get more training on this, <coughs> is just do a Google image search for hawks, or go to seeingbirds.com. Yeah, and get some pictures in front of you, and try just a series of, 
it's really tempting to go do like a one hour drawing of the first bird that you hit. Resist that temptation and if you want to spend one hour, instead of doing one, uh, one hour drawing, do 60 one minute drawings. Focusing on just trying to quickly kind of get a sense of the oomph of this critter. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? I'm going to go through all the, a bunch of these different things and then you kind of get a sense for, well that's a big head, that's a small head. And, and the sorts of shapes that these birds are going to do. Did you say that was a shape side? Is that a shape side? Yes, seeingbirds.com. He's, he's really, he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful photographer. I love this guy. Um, I have a few other um, images on here from a few other photographers, um, but uh, they're, uh, I'm eventually kind of leaving those out and kind of bringing in more of his, his work. Aren't they? Aren't they? Um, now, we're going to have some fun. Because I'm going to now show you a trick for speed drawing in the field. <coughs> that, um, again, some of the things that I show you, people go like, yeah, that's not so much my style. But a number of people have found that this trick is a game changer. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on looking at the values in what we're seeing. Now, values, what I mean by values, it's the, not looking at details. But where is it dark and where is it light? With your normal piece of white paper, what you can do is add more dark or erase things, starting with a white piece of paper. But what if you started with a piece of gray paper or brown paper, put your graphite on it, and just like you normally do, you can do your drawing there, but you also had a white pencil in addition to working one direction with things darker, you can work in the other direction with things lighter. So you can push your darks and pull your lights. This gets crazy cool. I'm going to show you a few demonstrations with some drawings of raptors. And then I'm going to pass out some pieces of toned paper to you, and you'll have a chance to play with this idea. Anybody bring a white pencil with them? A few folks have white pencils. If people um, want to purchase a white pencil, um, I bought these for um, uh, a buck fifty a piece, and I'll sell them to you for twenty dollars. No, um, <laughs> for a buck fifty. Um, if you've got plenty of white pencils at home, you don't need another white pencil. Then you might have to wait to get home and go on to seeingbirds.com, or you can borrow the white pencil from the person who's next to you. Um, does anybody want to get a, pick up a, a white pencil? And if you don't have money with you today, what you can do is pay me the next time you see. And we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the, with the money after, uh, after class. White pencil for anybody else? Does anybody have a, a pencil sharpener? Let's pass it to you. have got pencil sharpeners. Excellent. So here's, here's how we play this game. We need one over here. You're walking around out there, and the bird pops up in front of you. Jack, I need one more pencil. Oh. Certainly. So there's a bird. I'm going to notice it's got mostly a gray back, a little bit of black on the side, white on the head, and some white on the tail. Okay. I'm going to start with just posture, proportions, and angles like I usually do with my graphite pencil. Notice that it's very light. Can you see this in the back of the room? But it's just barely there. So I can goof around lightly like this a lot. And then when I get shapes that I like, I can put in, by pressing harder, we start to ignore those other lines and we just look at those hard lines. Now, I'm going to um, right? so once I'm, I'm here, if I get my white pencil out, I can drop in that white head and that tail. Right? And so I'm not just have, getting to make things darker. I can take those parts that I want to pop into white and do that. Notice that I'm using the color of the paper for the color of this bird's back. What you want to do with this technique is choose some parts of your bird that will be the color of your paper. So you're actually using the color of the paper as one of the values in your drawing. To make this pop out even more, 
If I put some dark behind it, see how much that starts to pop out? Or I can take a little paper blending tool, smudge that around, and you really get that light back of that, that grayish back of the bird really popping off the page. Let's take a look at another example with this bird, the frigidus hawk that we were looking at earlier. I'm going to start the same way, but this time on a piece of brown paper. My drawing here is actually done with a brown pencil. Posture, proportions, and angles. That's what this is. And it gives me this general shape. You can see I'm really kind of carving in those angles. I'm not worried about the details of the beak and the feet and these sort of things. Posture, proportions, and angles. That's the critical stuff. Once I've got that skeleton, that framework, I can hang and drape the details on top of that. And you notice that even here, in you that made beak, the head <laughs> hmm? the head I made the head smaller. That's right. <laughs> I'm doing that all the time. Um, the, uh, the beak and the feet are not elaborately detailed. It's really easy to kind of slow down and overwork those parts that catch our interest. We make them too big, we make them overworked. But here on this little quick sketch, right, I'm just keeping that simple. And now I'm going to start to bring in some values. So just a little bit of dark on the head and the wings there. And if this were a graphite pencil drawing, I'd be about done. But I'm on toned paper, so I pull out my white pencil and I go to town. And that's when these things really start to pop. You can do fun things like, oh, you've got some white flecks out there. Oh, let me just pop those in there. And one other thing I want to point out is that look at the, how, squint your eyes and look at how dark the shadow is on the belly here and the tail. That tail and that belly down there are white. It's really easy for us to kind of get into coloring book mentality and to take white pencil and put it across the whole value of the bird. Or what I could do is leave the color of the value of the paper in those areas and let the color of the paper where I don't put in the white be my shadow. So I can create a shadow by not putting the white there. So I'm being intentional about what is the shape of this coming down. And then I'm doing that over there. A little bit of detail on top of that, and I'm good to go. Here, to make this background, I, I notice that I'm using the color of the paper for both some of the shadow area here and some of the lighter area in the back where the sun is here. And to make this stand out, I put it, I put white, uh, I took my white pencil, put some of that in the sky to make this guy pop out against them. Could you just as easily have put dark back there since it's sure. that dark green? Yep. <laughs> How did you decide one versus the other? Um, I had my white pencil in my hand. <laughs> and um, I also, up in, in here in the, the head, I wanted that to also stand out. I knew if I got a bunch of darks in there, I might start to kind of lose this guy. <clears throat> so because, yeah. So here's one with a very bold shadow on it. Let's take a look at an example of how to approach that. So posture, proportions, and angles, blocking in the basic shape. Then I've got the framework that I can hang the details on. Then I can come along and start to make that darker. Here I put in the shadow, I dropped in the shadows. The, down here the tail of this bird has a, a, a tail with black and white stripes in it. But I'm going to actually put in shadow all the way across that because even though that's white stripes in there, because it's in shadow, it's dark. So I see that's dark, okay, I'm going to draw it dark. Now the white pencil, I put some white streaks across its belly where it's got those white stripes. It made its head a little bit more pale. And it's got these neat speckles in the wing. I dropped in those speckles. And once those speckles are in, I can really easily take my brown pencil again and work around those and just put dark in the places that where the white, pets, where white speckles aren't. Here's another one. Look at this scary part out here. All these little white, these feathers have white edges on them and little spots. There's a lot going on out here. So on this one, posture, proportion, and angles, then 
blocking in the basic shapes that I'm seeing. I'm seeing kind of a zone of feathers here, one over there, and a little bridge between them. So I've got the zone, the zone, and the bridge between them. It makes a little white comma of light up there and a little wedge of light down here below. So I'm kind of blocking in where I'm seeing the kind of the major areas of value. <coughs> Those guidelines then making fill it, make filling this in a lot easier. And now I'm ready to play with my white pencil. Remember those little white spots there in the wing? What I do is draw those in with my white pencil. And once I've got those in, they're little white lines. I can draw that those patterns in very easily with my pencil, and then when I, I can come back into it again with my dark pencil and fill in the spaces in between. That's a lot easier than trying to make those patterns by just getting the pencil kind of working around where I think all those white things will be doing. If there's a little white line across something, I can draw that white line and then shade it on either side. Makes it drawing those little white patterns much, much easier. <laughs> also note that the tail down here is white, the feathers down here on the lower chest are white, but they're also in shadow. So I'm letting the color of the paper here be my shadow. Put in a little bit of background next to it and the bird starts to pop out. This time I put in dark instead of putting light in back there. Um, but also notice what I'm doing here. I've got a light side and a dark side of the bird. In the background, I've got a dark side and a light side. So what I'm doing is using the idea of dark against light and light against dark. Playing with those contrast ideas to make parts of my bird stand out. I want the dark back to stand out. If I put this dark background <laughs> over here, I can lose my back. If I put my... Uh, uh, my, uh, uh, had, had this just against paper here, it stands out, but here it stands out even more. Also take a look at this branch. Here's another example of dark against light and light against dark. Look at how that, it's not an accident that the way that that branch is drawn in there, the, the part that's on the, the white, the pale paper, is dark, so that you, the branch pops out. The part that is against the, uh, the dark part is light. So the idea of light against dark and dark against light is something you can put in your artistic toolkit and apply to all sorts of things that you're saying. What? Are you putting these up at your channel? I'll, I'll put these up on as, as blog posts. Right. This is the value <laughs> scale that I'm using. So I've got the color of my paper, I've got a little bit gray and darker, a little bit whiter and whiter. Last one. Here's a cool bird. Posture proportions and angles. Dropping in uh, the, the basic pencil work and then the shadows, or the, the values on that, all with the pencil so far. I can get out my blending tool and smudge that a little bit. Notice how the blending tool makes things lighter? I mean darker? Also note that the pale back part of this bird here, I'm leaving as the color of the paper.